my name is Miss E. Barb. I am the music teacher for Elrod Elementary in Houston. I teach pre-K through fifth grade. I have a lot of fun things planned for us this morning, so let's get started. So this week is Earth Day. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sing the quaver song, Save the Planet. And then we're going to chant the ta and ti ti rhythm. And then we're going to practice the ta and ti ti rhythm in Shake the Papaya Down song. And then we're going to sing Shake the Papaya Down song. And then we're going to sing Pity Patty Polt using the ta and ti ti rhythm patterns. And then we're going to watch the quaver video about brass instruments. So let's go. Sing, save the planet. Conserve our water, plant a tree, recycle trash, save the electricity. Do your part to make it green. All is better when we keep it clean. Save our planet for all it's worth. Protect the environment. Preserve the earth, save our planet for all it's worth. Protect the environment, preserve the earth. Um, do not litter, lend a helping hand. Across the land, do your part to make it green. All is better when we keep it clean. Save our planet for all its worth. Protect the environment, preserve the Thank you. 
chant ta and tt rhythm okay now we're going to do a chanting game you're going to repeat each line after me while clapping the rhythm t t t t t t t t ta 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 t t ta t t ta ta t t ta t t Good job. Now you're going to sing with me and clap the rhythm. One, two, ready, go. T, 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 Ta, 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 T, T, Ta, T, T, Ta, Ta, T, T, Ta, T, T. Good job. Practice Ta and T, T rhythm and shake the papaya down. Mama says no play, this is a work day Up with the bright sun, get all the work done If you will help me climb up the tall tree Shake the papaya down Mama says no play Sing, shake the papaya down.
Sing Pity Patty Polt using Ta and TT rhythm patterns. Okay, before we sing, let's talk about the TT Ta's in this song. This symbol is called a quarter rest. It gets a beat, but it's a silent beat. You don't clap and you don't say ta. For this practice, we'll just say shh. Okay, just like before, I'm gonna say each line and you're gonna repeat after me. T T T T ta. Shh. T T T T ta. Shh. T T ta. T T ta. T T T T ta. Shh. Okay, good. Now let's do it all together. One, two. Ready, go. T T T T ta. Sh. T T T T ta. Sh. T T ta. T T ta. T T T T ta. Sh. Good. All right. Now we're gonna sing the song. Brass instrument demonstration, trumpet and euphonium, also called baritone. This is a trumpet and a euphonium. My mother and I are going to demonstrate how these are played. The smaller instrument has a higher pitched and the bigger instrument has a lower pitch. We are going to demonstrate two brass instruments. This is my mother, Miss Haley, and she is going to show us the trumpet. That's a trumpet, about that size. Okay, and she's going to play a little something. And this is a larger instrument. It's called euphonium. I used to call it baritone when I was growing up. I played baritone in middle school, high school, and college, and I haven't played in a long, long time. So let me show you a little bit of that, just a small bit. Quaver Video, Brass Instruments. Ah, just in time. I'm just about to complete the answer and solve this mystery once and for all. Mystery? Of what mystery does he speak? The only a mystery here is how badly Signora Quaver will hurt himself. Oh, what calamity he will cause in the shop! Just a little more. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, that is not going to be pretty! Oh, pretty? Uh, not uh, so much, <laughs> but it will be a molto entertaining. <laughs> I give it 10 seconds before disaster. 10, 9, 3, 2, 1! Whoa! Oh, 
Brass family. Quaver, can we give you a hand? Well, you could give me the pointer. Yeah, I'm just doing a bit of investigative work into brass instruments. I mean, they're so cool. They play in pop music, classical music, marching bands, military bands. It's amazing. I want to find out why they sound so different. So, why are they? Well, the trumpet up there is much smaller than this trombone. And this tuba is blooming enormous! Much larger than the other three instruments in the brass group. In fact, this French horn here has loads and loads of twists and turns in the tubing. And those twists and turns affect the range and the timbre of the instrument. The timbre is the quality of sound an instrument makes. Josh, go and grab that French horn and give it to me, will you? Right. Whew. Cool. Now, Josh, I want you to take this and play me a C. Do it. Uh, I'm not real sure which end is up. I think I blow in here, but then what? Well, you can't blow into there because every brass instrument needs a mouthpiece. I'll get you a French horn mouthpiece. This is a French horn mouthpiece. We'll put it in there. OK, you get on with that. Kate, you oh, play no, some no, trombone. No. Now, hang on, Josh. You have to hold it out to the side, the French horn. All the other brass instruments you hold out to the front or up in the air. Right, trombone. <laughs> That was brilliant. So, what's with the pipe Pilates? Well, I decided to unwind all these brass instruments to see how long their tubing was. Surely they can't be that different. I mean, maybe the trombone's a little bit longer than the trumpet, but other than that... Josh, you've got to be kidding. The trombone, if you stretch it out, is about nine feet long. The trumpet is like four foot seven. So, what about the tuba? Surely it's longer than the trombone. <laughs> Okay, great question. Imagine a pile of 63 magazines. On top of those magazines is a basketball player. Not just any basketball player, but a centre, a really big one. On top of his head is a giant, giant, giant hat. On top of that giant, giant, giant hat is 15 cupcakes. On top of those cupcakes is a really, really long candle. Have you got that in your head? Josh, is that clear? Does that make sense? Have you got it now? Not really. I've got this on my hand. Now, if you unwound the French horn, it will be almost 12 feet long, which is almost the same as the tuba. But they sound different because the tubes on the French horn are skinnier than those on the tuba. <sighs> Any tips on how to get one off your hand? Um, not yet. Quick! To the phone box! find brass instruments up the front in the orchestra because they're so loud. If they sat at the front, you'd never hear anything else. They sit at the back on the right-hand side. Cool. And they all sound a little bit different. There's the tuba. Kind of deep and rich sound. Then there's the trombone. And then, there's the trumpet. Cool. And there's a French horn. Each one has a different timbre or feeling to it. And the composer decides which sound he wants to use, depending on the feeling of his composition. But they sound best when they all play together in one big stonking 
brass section. Listen to this. <laughs> See how dramatic that sounded, the brass section, take a bow, take another bow, take another bow, now wave your mum, woo! One of the great things about brass instruments is that their timbre or sound quality is so loud because of what they're made from. That's why they're used in marching bands, so you can hear them over the top of the cheerleaders. My VLPE experiment is nearly ready for action. Louis? That stands for my very low pitch experiment. The sound a brass instrument makes is determined by the size of the mouthpiece and the length and size of the tube. Look at this mouthpiece. This is a trombone mouthpiece and it's really big. Look at this trumpet mouthpiece. It's a little bit smaller and this French horn mouthpiece is really small, and that affects the sound that a brass instrument makes as well. So, big trombone mouthpiece, big pipe, should give us low sound. Let's try it, Louis. There we go, a really low sound. Now, we'll try the French horn mouthpiece on this really small pipe. Louis, hit it. Perfect. Louis, before you go, I want you to tell me what are you actually doing in the mouthpiece? <coughs> Sorry? <coughs> oh, you're actually doing that in the mouthpiece. And what is that called when you do that? It's called an embouchure. Embouchure, the shape of the mouth in the mouthpiece. Not so fast. Your embouchure on the mouthpiece can also change the pitch of a brass instrument. If you tighten your cheeks and the muscles around your mouth, your lips vibrate quicker, which produces a higher sound on your instrument. <coughs> Allow me. <laughs> if you relax your embouchure, your lips will vibrate slower, which produces a lower sound. <laughs> now, back to you. So there we have it. Big pipes, big mouthpieces, make low sounds. Small pipes, small mouthpieces make high sounds. Big, low, small, high. Big, low, small, high. Good. Great, a question. Wait, my brother and I were having an argument about what the valves or buttons are for on a trumpet. Please help. That is a good question. If only the repairman were here. And called. Repairman, let's set something up in the shop. Boom, chicka boom. Check, shot. Yes, sir. At ease, men. History tells us that the trumpet or the bugle has been used for centuries to signal commands to the troops. And quite frankly, I wouldn't want to storm into battle to any other sound. Allow me to illustrate this point. Men, are you ready? Yes, sir. Sound the attack. <laughs> Pish posh, nemby, pemby, bazooki playing boy. Let's try it again. Men, at the ready. Sound the attack. <whistles> Enough. Hold your pipe, Sonny Jim. I'm not leading my men into battle with that skinny little silver thing. Let's do it again. Show us how the brass family should sound the charge. Perfect. Charge! Right, Franco and your little brother, this is the answer to your great question. First, I need a trombone. Perfect timing! Now, hi Kate. If Kate plays a low note on her trombone, the tubes go long. If she plays a high note, the tube is shorter. Let's look at the trumpet. Now, 
If I blow air into the trumpet, the valves that the repairman presses reroute the air along shorter and longer pipes. That's how we get high and low notes on the trumpet. Now, repairman, this is our chance. The first performance of our floor trumpet boogie. Boom, chicka, boom. We know what the vowels are for. Now, if only there was a trumpet player. There you go, Franco. A real trumpet with real vowels. Now you know what they're for. Welcome to the second of three matches in the World Orchestra Section Moving Championship. Logoshov is one up in the series, Dimitar Berbatov to take the first move. The Spanish opening. Woodwinds take centre stage. Logoshov to move. Violins front, left and centre, and cellos and basses to front right. I can't believe it. A double move. Can Berbatov counter? What a masterstroke! Percussion to far back, and yes, brass in front of them. The old one-two. Berbatov wins. It's one each. Next game, I win. What a brilliant brassy day we've had. But what have we found out? This is what we found out. The length of the tube. The size of the tubing. The size and shape of the mouthpiece and the valves all affect the timbre and the pitch of each brass instrument. Watch this. Now, last but not least, the big daddy of them all. The tuba. Now, Dave, Chris, Mardi, Ken and Scott will play a piece of brass quintet music for us. Hit it, guys! <laughs> Try and listen to the different ranges and pitches of the different instruments. Try and pick them out with your ear. Also, look at the way their mouths slightly change shape because their mouth on the mouthpiece helps to change the sound and the pitch of the instrument as they play it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week.